the word of the Lord says this. Once we were safe on shore, we learned that we were on the island of Malta. The people of the island were very kind to us. It was cold and rainy, so they built a fire on the shore to welcome us. As Paul gathered an armful of sticks and was laying them on the fire, a poisonous snake driven out by the heat bit him on the hand. The people of the island saw it hanging from his hand and said to each other, a murderer, no doubt. Though he escaped the sea, justice will not permit him to live. But Paul shook the snake into the fire and was unharmed. For a thought this morning, the storm, the shipwreck, and the snake bite. What happens when good trouble finds you? The storm, the shipwreck. The snake bite. What happens when good trouble finds you? Have you have you ever been in a place where you felt like it was if it wasn't for bad luck, you wouldn't have any luck at all? Like like the inevitable is going to occur, but not only that, it's going to happen to me. Uh, I know that I'm not the only one in here who doesn't go looking for trouble, but it seems like where there's trouble, it will find me. Uh, I know that I don't, I'm not the only one who has that testimony, that, that trouble finds you. Has, has anything ever happened to you that you just can't explain? It, it, it just happened out of nowhere have you ever been caught in a rainstorm and you didn't even have an indication that it was going to rain the weatherman didn't predict it the clouds weren't in the sky it was a sunny day and out of nowhere there's thunder and there's lightning and it rained on your head that's what that's what Whoopi Goldberg said it's gonna rain on your head I know that I'm not I'm not the only one. And it's difficult for us to hear the phrase good trouble and not instantly think of the late civil rights leader and Georgia congressman John Lewis, for whom the phrase was a type of battle cry for him. In numerous interviews, Lewis recounted how he had come to adopt the phrase as the way we talk about his civil rights work. The late congressman would say it like this, do not get lost in a sea of despair, but be hopeful, be optimistic. Our struggle is not the struggle of a day, of a week, a month, or a year. It is a struggle for a lifetime. Never, ever be afraid to make some noise and get in good trouble necessary trouble. Paul, Paul serves as an example of what good trouble looks like. Don't believe me? Let's go back to what Deacon Carla read for us in Acts chapter 14. Paul was there. He was, he was uh, ministering to, to a man who was sick, who, who was sick in his body, and Paul healed him. Paul was looking and he got in to some good trouble. Uh, Paul was making some noise. We, we, we find Paul after his conversion, he was fearless about showing the good news of Jesus Christ. Let's pick up and find Paul in Acts 27, 26. We find Paul and he is in the presence of the king, our good friend, King Agrippa. He is right there in front of King Agrippa and, and his good governor 
and Paul was sharing his testimony as a plea to stay out of prison. How many of us know that we are overcomers by our testimony? This is where we find Paul. Paul was giving his testimony in front of the king. How many of us would like to have that opportunity to give your testimony in front of the president? To give your testimony. I just want a few minutes with Donald Trump. I just want to talk to him about the goodness of the Lord. Paul was talking so good that he almost converted King Agrippa. He, he almost converted King Agrippa. And when King Agrippa realized that he was agreeing with Paul a little bit too much, he had to step outside. It was King Agrippa and the governor who then agreed that Paul had done no wrong. Does this sound familiar? Where, where the governor or the king and the priest agreed that Jesus had done no wrong. They still sent him to prison, but they realized that their hands were washed clean he still had done no wrong they still allow Paul to be imprisoned and and Paul is in this text he has been imprisoned set to see on one vessel and then he was taken from that vessel and put on another vessel. Anybody here believe that God will order your steps? God will put you where you need to be. It might seem like it's a little bit crazy. It doesn't feel good. But if you allow God to order your steps, he will put you where you need to be. So Paul was on one vessel. He was put on another vessel. But there was a storm at sea, and then a shipwreck, and then a snake bite. I know that Paul is not the only person who has nav had to navigate hit after hit. Has anyone in here had to deal with hit after hit, loss after loss, dilemma after dilemma, issue after issue, trial after trial, sickness after sickness, tribulation after tribulation. It just kept coming. It just kept coming. Has anybody here ever been to the beach and fallen right there on the shore and the waves just kept coming the water was shallow but the waves just kept coming and even though you could really stand in the water you still lost your balance because the waves just kept coming they never allowed for you to get your balance it just kept coming and all you could say is God make it stop Ah, anybody ever cried out to say, God, make it stop? We just went through a pandemic and there was loss after loss. Every time we turned on the news, every time we turned on the TV, some, something else had happened. And there was loss after loss, hit after hit. I know several people who caught coronavirus three and four times. Once they thought they got rid of it, they got sick again. It was hit after hit. But some of us like Paul, Paul had the foresight to know that something was going to happen, but it was out of his control and Paul had to go into the storm even though he didn't want to. In, in Acts 27, if we come on down, in Acts 27, 10, Paul forewarns the crew that there was going to be a storm. He said this, men, I believe there is trouble ahead if we go on. A shipwreck, loss of cargo, and danger to our lives as well. How many of us know that we don't always listen to wise counsel? 
Uh, we could have saved ourselves a lot of grief and a lot of pain had we listened to wise counsel, listened to those who were trying to tell us what was ahead. I don't know how many days I sat on the side of the bed wishing that I would have listened to my mother, wishing that I would have listened to my grandmother, wishing I would have listened to what my father told me, Listen to what my uncles told me. Listen to what my godfather told me. I wish that I would have listened. And here we find the crew wishing they would have listened to what Paul said. It would have saved us a lot of grief. And here in verse 11, we, we learn that they, they didn't listen. They, they sailed out into the storm Anyway, and that ended up being the storm of their lives. Do I have a witness, Mount Carmel, uh, that if we would have listened to wise counsel, perhaps we wouldn't be in the storm of our lives right now. I won't get too personal, but if we would have listened, if we would have listened, we might not have been in the storm of 